Hey guys, I picked up Anakin, the Unstoppable Edition on the Nintendo eShop. I've been playing it for the last couple days and I just completed it, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that game on this channel, so let's go ahead and uh, check it out. Anakin, the Unstoppable Edition is a 2D side-scrolling action platformer using a classic 8-bit graphic design. It was released on February 8th on the Nintendo eShop for the price of $9.99. But for some reason, it was instantly discounted to $7.99 on day one. The game was developed and published by Joy Masher, who is an independent Brazilian studio. This game was a rescan, remaster, if you will, of the original Onikin game, which was released back in 2012 on Windows, OS X, and Linux. The game was also playable on Steam. In the game, you will navigate through six different missions or stages playing as Zaku, who is a warrior fighting against a group of cybernetic machines called the Onikin that took over the world. Your main weapon will be a blade similar to that of the classic arcade game Strider. You can collect power-ups for this blade that will increase its range. The extended range can prove to be very useful, however, taking damage from enemies will cause you to lose your power-up. This was quite irritating because this is a game where you take damage often, which results in you playing the majority of the game without the extended blade. Aside from the extended blade, you will also collect bombs throughout your missions. The bombs provide good damage, but the fact that you can't jump and throw your bombs made it feel extremely limited in its use. The missions consist of two different gameplay styles. The primary style is that of a 2D platformer where you jump on standard platforms or travel using overhead cables. In the alternate style, you ride on a jet ski of sorts, and in this style, you play as more like a horizontal shooter. Each mission will have its own sub-boss and end-boss. These boss fights were overall okay, but for the most part, were forgettable experiences. And to be honest, that was pretty much the feeling I got across the entire game. The enemies, the stage design, music, and characters were all just pretty much forgettable. The missions were all short, where you can complete most of them in under 10 minutes, including cutscenes and all. It will take you longer than 10 minutes to beat most missions because they can be very cheap and unforgiving at times, so you need to replay them several times until you get your timing down. After you complete the sixth mission, you will get the ending of the game. This will unlock Hardcore Mode, Bosch Rush Mode, and a seventh mission where you play as Jenny in a Contra-styled mission. This, along with everything else in this game, was good in theory, but poorly executed, mainly because the controls for this game were simply terrible. The game supports an analog stick, but it just as well not have supported one because it's virtually unplayable using an analog stick. I tried to use them two different pro controllers and continued running into problems over and over. I recalibrated both my controllers several times and it was still a no-go. The main issue I would have is that I'd be running to the right, then stop to strike an enemy, but my player would turn all the way around and all of a sudden be facing the left. This happened time and time again, and it just drove me crazy. Also, the game only supports four directional controls meaning that using an analog stick you have a lot of dead spaces in your movements where the game is completely unresponsive. I finally switched over to the Pro Controller D-pad and it solved most of my problems. But it was pretty ridiculous that in 2019 you, you make a 2D action platformer that doesn't support 8 directional movement at the very least. I mean Contra on the NES did this much and that was over 30 years ago. So in the end, I really wanted to like this game. I, I found out about it a couple weeks back. I saw some gameplay trailers and I heard that it was kind of compared to Strider, Ninja Gaiden, Shatterhand. I got pretty excited. I really like retro style games. Um, just had played uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon last year and that game was amazing. So I kind of had high hopes. Um, and it just it just fell short pretty much on all aspects. I mean, the, the controls just were, were no good. The game was short. It just was, it was just pretty, pretty unforgettable. Um, do consider that this game was made by a small dev team. I think only two people made the game, and the game is $7.99. So it's kind of like on the baseline of being, you know, maybe playable. You know, if you like retro style games and you have a, a D-pad that you like, I personally don't like the D-pad on, on the Pro Controller. I had some of the 8-bit Doe controllers, but the, the software for them is no good, so I'm not going to buy a new 8-bit Doe controller since they won't support their old software. But um, I give it a 5 out of 10 in the end. It's, like I said, it's marginal, playable, so it kind of depends on if you think it's a go. For $7.99, it's maybe, if it drops down to $5.99 or $4.99, you may, may want to give it a try. But uh, that's it, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you uh, like it and, and share it, and also subscribe to see more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.